Hello and welcome to The Mythic Quill. I'm Sherry LeClaire. Today's topic is Book Covers 101 for Authors. Book cover design is one service that new and indie authors can't afford to skimp on. So we often start out with limited resources and we have to decide what things we absolutely have to pay for, what things we can find cheaper ways to do, what we can do without, and sometimes, of course, what we can do ourselves. And we can learn to do a lot of things ourselves, as long as we're patient and willing to put the time in to learn. But unless you're already an accomplished artist or have some kind of background in graphic design, you'll want to leave the cover design to the experts because a poorly designed cover can turn readers away from what could otherwise be a great story, whereas a great book cover can draw readers in. Um, and even when we are not creating our own covers, as indie authors, we're making a lot of the final decisions of, on our cover design. So that means it's important to understand the basics. It's important to think of our covers as part of our marketing plan, because our cover is the first thing that the readers are gonna see. And the cover tells the reader the genre of the book, the subject matter, and the mood or tone. And if you think about when we're in bookstores or libraries, a lot of times we're, we're scanning the books for maybe what we're in the mood for, the genre we like. And the book covers are the things that tell us that. They tell us, is this the genre I like? Uh, is it the right mood or tone? So it's really important to think about those things. And of course, readers want the decision to be as easy as possible. So it's important for your book cover to be attention grabbing and indicative of what's inside. And there was one time, I, and this happened to me one time, and luckily it was only one time, where I picked up a book to read based on the cover. And I thought it was one kind of story because of what I saw on the cover. And when I read it, um, it was completely different to story than what the, the book cover had indicated it would be. So, of course, that kind of, uh, and as we would say in Newfoundland, it rotted me. So it was probably the, one of the few negative book reviews I've ever written, but I felt like I needed to because I almost felt like the author was trying to dupe the reader into buying her book by pretending it was uh, a book in a more popular genre. It's a good way to kind of lose a reader's trust if they feel like your book cover is not really, uh, doesn't really match the story inside. And of course, opposite to that, the book cover could also gain, help you gain reader's trust. So here are some examples of some book covers that show you what the genre is. And a lot of times you can see, if you didn't see the title, um, or the name of the author, you can still tell what genre this is. So this is a fantasy novel, and fantasy novels often have drawings or uh, the hero with the two leather trade or scenes from the book. And if you're looking at this book, you can clearly see we have people flying around or climbing around and birds and swords. You can clearly tell from this book that it is a fantasy book. And by the age of the characters, you can guess it's a uh, kind of a teen or young adult uh, fantasy book. With this, and with this book, of course, you could tell without seeing the title or the name of the authors what genre this is. And of course, this is um, this is an MM romance book. So it's important that your genre is is represented by the cover of your book. So if you're not really sure, you can look at other books in your genre. Now, the cover needs to hook the reader. And they say that the cover is what gets their attention and causes them to flip it over to read the synopsis on the back. And then it's the synopsis then that caused them to open the book and look inside. So the book cover has a lot of work to do. There's psychological reasons why the text and the images are laid out the way they are. And good professional book designers will know this and they'll know what to do to, be, to make your cover uh, as effective as possible. Um, now, even though we're not designing our covers, if you're interested in learning more about that, draft to digital has an interesting article in their blog posts about the psychology of book covers. And I'll put the link down below if you're interested in taking a look. So aside from the images, font and font color are also important because they need to stand out from the background and they need to be large enough to be seen easily in thumbnail size. So for example, somebody is on their phone scrolling through uh, the books on Amazon, they need to be able to read the title of the book and preferably the author's name as well. Um, so that's really important. Um, some other decisions that we have to make as indie authors is if we're going to use a glossy cover, so this is a glossy cover, or a matte cover, this is matte, and also the trim size. So um, if you watched my last video and um, you saw the little tour of my bookshelves, you'll, you would have noticed that there are a lot of different trim sizes. This is a five by eight, so that's pretty much what like the size across and like and down. So this is a five by eight book. This is 16 by nine. This one's also five by eight, but there are lots of different trim sizes. 
So this James Patterson one is bigger still than the 16 by 9. So if you're not really sure what trim size you want for your book, you can look at other books in your genre. But as you can tell, there's actually a lot of variation in trim sizes, um, even within genres. Um, but whatever trim size you decide and whatever kind of cover you want, glossy, matte, whatever, you need to check with your distributors and make sure that that, that trim size and uh, the cover options you choose are actually available to you. And of course, it's important that you know that before the designer makes the final files for you. So let's talk about the cost of cover design. And I'm going to talk about this in order of the most expensive to the least. So the one that's going to be the most costly, both, both in uh, money and time, are the original artwork created by the cover designer. And of course, that could be hand-drawn art that's rendered onto the computer, or uh, it could be original artwork by the, the graphic designer. Um, and then, of course, done on the computer. Uh, of course, if you've ever seen a video of a graphic artist, uh, graphic artist kind of creating their work, you'll understand why it's the most expensive. A lot of time and effort goes into creating those, those pieces of art. And a step down from that is a completely computer-generated artwork. Now, a lot of times they aren't really realistic for like facial expressions and stuff. So sometimes the cover designer will go back in and kind of do some brush strokes or touches, touch-ups on the, on the images in which case that might affect the, the cost a little bit as well. So down from that we have uh, original photography. So sometimes you have uh, cover designers that will work for photographers and models to create uh, custom covers for you. In which case, of course, you can, you can expect your cost to reflect having to pay the photographers and the models and so on. Um, now down from that is stock art and stock photos. Um, and this can be custom where you tell uh, the cover designer what you want and they go look for the custom artwork or the custom images that would match what you need um, and they'll put it together in a new and original way um, or they could be pre-made covers. So for example this one uh, my first edition of my first book was uh, custom but made from stock art so I told the designer what I had in mind for the book they went and found stock images for the background and for the front. Now I I believe I mentioned in one of my other videos as well that this actually looked a lot different before. This girl had a different color hair, she had uh, a different weapon, um, but he changed things to match what I wanted, to, to match my vision. So this is an example of a pre-made, well not a pre-made cover, but a, a custom stock art cover. And of course as I showed you this earlier, um, this is an example of a photograph. And these can be original, um, they could be stock art as well, um, like stock images but sometimes they're original uh, and have models actually posing for that particular book cover. And there are a lot of sites that offer pre-made covers and the option of getting custom stock art covers uh, as well. There's like, uh, there are sites like Damon's the book cover designer and so on. And perhaps the very cheapest way to go is um, to go to those sites that have templates where you put in your own images, um, you type in uh, what the text that you want and voila, you have a a book cover. Kindle Direct Publishing has a book cover generator and another company that uh, actually provides templates, you can buy the templates and put your images in, is bookdesigntemplates.com and I'm going to put the links for all those sites down below in the description. So I just want to give you a word of caution before you go out and use a book cover design template um, because you have to keep in mind that there are even many experienced authors out there who've had to do to redo their covers many times uh, because they weren't doing the job that they wanted them to do. So you have to keep in mind that there are still a lot of things you need to think about in your cover design. So until you're used to thinking about those things, you might actually uh, want to kind of pause on doing a book cover design template and get a professional to do it for you at least the first few times until you kind of get a hang of what, of what you need to think about. Another thing that can affect the final cost of your book cover is whether you just want ebook format or if you want ebook, paperback, hardcover, audio cover, or any combination of those. Um, and another word about that as well is even if you're getting hardcover and paperback, remember you can't get those files done, the final files for those from your designer, until you have the final page count and what kind of paper you want to use because those things will affect the spine width. But you can get the ebook cover and the audiobook cover done early on in the process. And in my opinion, it's important to do so if you can, if it's at all possible, because you can use that book cover to promote your book. So it's important to try to get that as early as possible. Another thing to think about is, do you want to use your cover design or the images from your cover to create promotional materials like, like bookmarks and wrap cards and so on, business cards maybe? 
Because if you do, you might want to check with your book cover designer early on to see if it's possible for them to give you files for those things. There are a lot of websites out there that can help you find cover designers and so on. Um, there's like all in one stop shops kind of idea for authors like readsy.com. And then a lot of sites that focus mostly on uh, cover design, whether that be pre-made covers or custom made covers. And a lot of those sites will off also offer services like formatting and so on. Um, so some of those sites are like uh, Demonza, um, the book cover designer, rocking book covers, self pub e uh, covers and so on. I'm going to put links for those sites down below in the description. Um, so please feel free to check them out and compare them, compare prices, compare what's available and so on. So the final thing I wanted to talk to you about is if you use IncomeSpark for, for printing purposes, like I use them along with, with KDP because uh, IncomeSpark offers hardcovers and KDP doesn't. Um, but if you use IncomeSpark, they have a new option for hardcovers as well. In the past, the options for our hardcovers were um, cloth bound, jacketed uh, hardcovers, which is like this. You have your dust cover on it and then of course it's cloth bound inside. So if you lose the cover, there's nothing here, but the title is on the spine. Um, or you could have ordered case laminate, which is just like this. It's a hardcover, but the picture's right on the cover. And the new option they have is jacketed case laminate, which is what I have here actually. And of course, when I first heard they had the option of jacket a case laminate, I was always excited about that because you get your book with a dust cover so it looks nice and fancy. But if the dust cover gets damaged or lost, you still have a complete book cover with your the name of the book, your the author name and the image. Um, so of course, there's no missing what the book is. So there's something to be said though about the cloth bound books. Um, so I'm gonna ask your opinion on that. So if you have an opinion, tell me what your preference is. Do you prefer the hardcover cloth bound? And I know my son prefers this one. I don't know if I think maybe he thinks it's fancier. Or do you prefer the jacket of case laminate? So give me your opinion on that in the comment section below. So I still haven't made the final decision for which way I'm going to go uh, in the long run for my hardcovers. So if you have any opinion on that, please leave it in the comment section below. So next week we have a special guest coming in. Um, and when I say coming in, I mean virtually over Zoom. Um, but we're gonna be talking to uh, fantasy author Richard H. Stevens, and I'm gonna ask him some questions and maybe we could even get him to do a reading for us as well. So please tune in next week to see that. So if you've enjoyed this video and found it useful, please give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content like this about writing, publishing, um, and just stories in general, um, please hit the subscribe button. And if you hit the bell icon, you'll be notified the next time I post a video. Thank you and see you next time.